If you are looking to source electronic parts, you are probably trying to find the most efficient way to do it without jumping around to a bunch of distributor sites. In this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do that. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Octoparts Expert Insights on Sourcing Bombs video series. This is part two. In this episode, we're going to be looking all at sourcing alternate parts. I'm joined today by my good friend and colleague from Multi Academy fame, Zach Peterson. How's it going? Always happy to be here doing these videos. Happy you're here. And we're going to jump right into the meat of things. So when I go and I get on Octoparts Mom Tool and I start finding these alternate parts, is it is it easy to see which parts are at risk? Um, like ones that are, you know, going to be obsolete soon or uh, don't meet compliance anymore. Like how does that work? Yeah, definitely. So let's let's just take a look at the website. So here I'm on Octopart.com and I'm just going to click over to the Bomb Tool and let me upload an example bomb here. So uh, in part one, we looked at this bomb file. We're going to look at this bomb file now. So we're going to look at a slightly different bomb here. If we go through here and start looking through this list, we can start to identify uh, some uh, part numbers that we may need to change in order to fix either the price or the availability or the life cycle issues here. So we can already see the life cycle issues right here for this part using this color coding here in the matched part number column. So here, just as an example for this part, you can see here we have manufacturer life cycle state discontinued. Obviously, if we want to, if we were going to take this design and source it over a long period of time, we would want to swap out this part. Gotcha, gotcha. So you brought this up a little bit earlier, but I'm curious. Looking at this, you know, sometimes we're only allowed to source from a preferred list. Um, is it possible to filter these parts to see just what's been approved? Uh, in terms of the preferred distributors, yeah, there is. So your preferred distributor list is held right up here under the preferred distributors option. And then you can just scroll through here or search, for example, to find preferred distributors. Um, so for example, you know, TTI, right? There's TTI, uh, US, Europe, and Asia. And then I can select one of these preferred distributors. What's really nice here is they also have a bomb coverage column. And the bomb coverage is basically what percentage of the parts in your bomb is this distributor able to source? So this not only helps you find, you know, a preferred distributor from your approved vendor list, but maybe you're shopping for a new distributor. You can actually do that here in this bomb settings column. Cool. What about uh, other sort of verified criteria like Rojas, you know, in stock, stuff like that? Sure, sure. So that's more of a part number level issue. Um, so for that, you would need to then look through, uh, for example, uh, the the various part numbers here and then check to see that they are indeed compliant with, uh, with the uh, various things you mentioned like Rojas. Um, so as an example here, we have the parts analytics tab. Here with the parts analytics tab, you can see here that we actually do have entries for Reach and Rojas. We have one that's unknown and 35 that are known to be non-compliant. And then here you can see with Reach, we have 25 that are compliant and then 11 that are either unknown or non-compliant. So if you're worried about issues with, uh, for example, uh, compliance, you have that summarized right here in this column. And if I click on these, you can see it just filters down to the parts that are non-compliant. So for example, with reach non-compliance, I can just click here and you can see it filters down to just those six parts. Um, when it comes to life cycle status, um, we can filter down just to the discontinued parts, again, just by clicking on one of these entries. If I click right here, you can see, again, if I scroll down, it filters down just to the five parts that are discontinued in terms of their life cycle status. And these are ones that we would wanna swap out. Okay, so why don't we, now that we kind of understand how the tool generally works, why don't we jump into actually replacing a part? So let's, let's, let, let's pick a part and find some alternates. Sure. Um, let me just pick this first one, right? This, is, this one's right here, so we can just go for it. So an easy way to find an alternate by description, which is something you often need to do for, for example, these capacitors or, or resistors, um, passive components. Um, a simple thing you can do is just copy this description then go over here to the matched part number column, and then you can 
paste that description in right here inside this column. Now, sometimes you need to just refine this search just a little bit in order to find the part that is going to work. But as you can see here, as I edit this uh, search entry here inside this column, you can see here this list of suggestions is updating. Now here, I can just select one of these immediately. And if I select it, it's then going to change the entry in the part number uh, and then it updates the description, it updates the offer, it updates the price. It seems like the next step in this process is going to be actually selecting offers, right? Yeah, once you've identified the candidate parts, of course, again, we want to stress they do need to be qualified by the engineering team. But once those alternate parts are qualified, then you can go through and identify where you're actually going to buy these parts. And that's where you have to then select the offers. Gotcha. So that is uh, seems like a perfect place to stop this walkthrough. And we will be doing that in the next video. So if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss that video when it comes out. Thanks so much. And we'll see you in the next episode.